Hi there. Welcome. I'm Dr. Filomena Trindade and I wanted to talk to you today about my three tips for health and longevity. Basically, it's my three pillars for having improved health. And very simply, I say three because usually I can remember three things and if I can remember three things, I'm sure you can remember three things, right? The whole rule of threes. So, pillar number one is how your nutrition, what you put in your mouth, the food that you eat, and how important that is. Number two is movement, and I'll go through these in detail. And number three is decreasing the effects of stress on your body. So let's start with number one, nutrition. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the quality, not just the quantity, but the quality of food that we ingest. You know, Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine, and medicine thy food. No time in history do I feel like that has been more true than today. In this time where, you know, we're being bombarded with different infections, our immune system uh, in general is down. So we want to make sure that we realize that what we ingest, what we put in our mouth, has so much to do with our health. Right? Our food communicates with our DNA. So I said it was my rule of threes. Now within each category, there's three categories or three subcategories. So under nutrition, number one is you want to be eating 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables. And for fruits, I usually say only about two to three servings per day. A serving is a half a cup, for example, or when it comes to fruit, a half a cup of something cooked. So if it's a uh, cooked asparagus or spinach, it be half a cup. If it's raw, something like lettuce, it would be a cup as one serving. When it comes to fruit, it would be like a medium apple or a medium orange. But I prefer that you eat the low glycemic load fruits like your kiwis and all your berries. So raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, and all should be organic. And for that, half a cup again is a serving. And in addition, I want you to eat 35 grams of soluble fiber. So the fiber in your vegetables is mostly insoluble, but it's the soluble fiber that helps the gut microbiota, so the good bacteria in our colon and our intestines that converts that fiber into short chain fatty acids, which are really important to maintain that mucin layer and for the health of the cells in our colon especially. So it becomes extremely important. And for that, I suggest two tablespoons of chia seeds per day, two tablespoons of flaxseed meal, so ground up flax seeds, and about four to six chestnuts per day, as well as a tablespoon of your um, coconut flour, for example. You could do other flours. I prefer coconut because it's rich in fiber, does not have um, a lot of calories, and it's a great fiber for your gut microbiome. So, that was within pillar number one, the three subcategories. Now, oh, I'm sorry, that was the first of the three subcategories. Now, I just talked about two of the subcategories. Number one is your vegetables and your fruit, and number two is the soluble fiber. Now, number three is hydration. So making sure that you're drinking at least two liters of the cleanest water you can get. And if you are filtering your water, make sure that you are also adding back the minerals that would be removed if you do like a reverse osmosis uh, type of filter, for example. And when it comes to hydration, we want to make sure that we're not adding a lot of the, of the liquid with meals because that dilutes your digestive juices. So I always say one big like eight ounce glass of water first thing in the morning and then do one like mid-morning and one uh, mid-afternoon. Um, and as long as that, if that's eight ounces, you already have 24 ounces there. And then when you're brushing your teeth, for example, or before you go to bed, although before you go to bed sometimes means you're getting up more times during the night, so you need to take that into account. So that was pillar number one with the three subcategories. Pillar number two, movement, right? We want to make sure that we're getting our lymph system moving. So movement is really important because our lymph system 
which is the other circulatory system. We think of the blood, which is composed of two, the arteries and the veins, but we often forget that we have a third circulation, which is the lymph. And for that, you need m massage or movement to get it to actually flow because it does not have any valves or any muscle, our lymph system that is, or our lymph ducts. So we wanna make sure that you have some kind of a stretching movement that you do every day that enhances your lymph movement, you or your lymph flow, I should say. You also wanna do some aerobic exercise, you know, where you are getting your heart rate up. You wanna do at least seven minutes consistent. Uh, and there could be seven minutes of vacuuming, uh, running in place, or just walking in place at a pace a little more than your simple walk. So that's aerobic. And then you want to also include some static movement, whether you're doing weights or you're picking something up or you're working in your garden and you're picking up something that contains weight. That's really important because it is going to also stimulate your bone and promote um, good um, bone formation as well as you know, you're getting some muscle toning. But the other thing is that it helps you avoid osteopenia and osteoporosis. Now the third pillar is decreasing the effects of stress on your body. Now how do you propose we're going to do that? Well we're going to do that several different ways because we can't always avoid stress. Right? Sometimes we just have stress affecting us on a daily basis that we don't have a lot of control over. But we can control how we react to the stressor, to the stress. Or in other words, we can control the effects that they may have on our body. Body, mind, and spirit. Right? Total self. So, I have three, remember my rules of threes, three things that you can do that will decrease the effects of stress on your body. Number one. Believe in a power higher than yourself. You don't have to belong to a particular religion, but if you do, that is one way you can express it. But we know from the studies on the blue zones, right, the five zones of the world that have the highest number of people living till they're over 100, right, that's been well studied. We know that one thing all those people had in common, whether they were in Okinawa or in Costa Rica, or in Loma Linda, California, or in Nicada, Greece, or in Sardinia, for example. The one thing they all had in common is that they believed in a power higher than themselves. And they practiced that on a daily basis. So I said, believing in that, and together with that, I want to also bring my second point, which is practicing gratitude. Being grateful for just being present, for a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset or a nice view that you may witness sometime during the day. Being able to put your feet on the beach and feel the water on your feet or the sand on your feet. It doesn't matter. It's the practice of gratitude, being grateful for something. And I like doing that first thing in the morning. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I express gratitude just for being here, for being present, for waking up. And the third thing is sleep. Now, why do you think I'm talking about sleep? Because sleep is anabolic. Sleep is the way we restore and rebuild and rejuvenate. But it is also the time during which we can get into more of the parasympathetic mode. Right? We get out of the sort of rat race or the get it done yesterday mode, the sympathetic drive, right? Into more relaxation. However, there's something really important about sleep and that is the production of melatonin. And melatonin isn't just the hormone of sleep. It is also an antioxidant, a very powerful antioxidant that fights free radicals and lowers the risk of a cancer, for example. So you want to make sure you're getting eight hours of sleep per night. And there's a caveat. You want to be in bed before midnight. You want to be in bed at least by 10, 10.30 at the latest because between 10 and midnight, 10 and 12, is when your body is able to make the most amount of melatonin. So in conclusion and in review, my three pillars. Number one is your food, your nutrition, how you feed your body. Number two, movement. 
And number three, lowering the effects of stress on your body. I hope this has been useful to you. Make it a great day.